Bien, muy buenas tardes a todos. Muy bienvenidos a este... Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the webinar, where we are going to discuss uh, the call for uh, Blacknik ambassadors. This webinar will be presented by Guillermo Sicileo of uh, R&D of uh, um, Blacknik's um, Infrastructure Development. Thank you for coming. I'm Sandra Reyes of uh, the Blacknik staff. I welcome you and I thank you for coming on time, those of you connected. Before we begin, let me give the floor to Guillermo. Let me tell you what the webinar is going to be like. We are going to spend an hour here at this meeting. The webinar will have simultaneous interpretation into three languages, Spanish, English, and Portuguese. <clears throat> so you can choose the language you want in the toolbar there click on the globe this webinar is being recorded and uh, very soon we we'll share the link if you want to watch it again at the end of the presentation there will be some time for q a so while guillermo sicileo presents uh, this program you uh, you can uh, write uh, down your questions in the q a panel so the idea is to answer any questions you may have. Without further ado, I, would not, I want you to enjoy this session and uh, I'll leave you with Guillermo. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you for, the present, for your presentation, for introducing me. Um, first of all, I want to thank all those of you who uh, got uh, were interested in the program thank you i hope you can uh, make use of this i hope it's useful for you so let me tell you what this, this initiative is about uh, and uh, the uh, targets our goals i'm guillermo sicileo i work in r and d Ablaknik. My team includes Elisa Peirano, who works with RD, and Alejandra Costa, who also works in uh, this area. We cover the uh, area, uh, the technology area at Blacknik, engineering. This program of uh, R&D ambassadors as a goal. It's, it intends to um, put together in a program all the uh, collaboration that we received uh, many years, for many years with collaborators, uh, partners in the community and looking for new partners to new collaborators. As years have gone by, we received the support um, as we uh, um, um, tried to uh, complete our mission, we uh, received the assistance and the collaboration of many collaborators in the community. And we want this to be a formal relationship because we think it's, it's useful. The idea, that's the idea of this program, to formalize the uh, collaboration of uh, previous existing technology leaders and future technology leaders. And that's the idea to find new uh, collaborators and opinion leaders in uh, the various countries. So how does that, uh, uh, how does that translate? Uh, well, we want to strengthen the technology capacities uh, of the regional community for uh, an open and stable internet we're going to discuss it uh, further, but we have two aims. One is to detect new leaderships, to bring them to the community, to strengthen the collaboration, uh, the partnership uh, links, uh, formalizing this uh, uh, collaboration and strengthen the technology capacities, infrastructure and the R&D activities that we are in charge of. What do we aim at? Well. Our idea is to find and enhance, uh, promote new technology leaders in Latin America and the Caribbean. 
We want them to help us uh, uh, in this endeavor with R&D at LACNIC. We have some objectives, some goals, um, deploying infrastructure, research, and that's something that we can't do alone. We need the regional community. And there, we need people that can help us in this endeavor. That is why what we want, we want you to be our ambassadors, our R&D ambassadors. So, as a counterpart, one of the things that we want is we want to support ambassadors to become opinion leaders in uh, their uh, te uh, local communities, technology leaders. Many of you here certainly may already be uh, participating. You are already active and opinion leaders, or at least you are giving your first, first strides relating with the local communities and being recognized. We want to support you in that uh, so that in your regions and in your areas, you may be better known and you may be people that others may uh, consider opinion leaders in, in this uh, uh, and a trusted person in the deployment of infrastructure. We want the community to know who plays that role. On the other hand, we want to help you build your brand. This is something that has to do with defining your identity and uh, stress uh, your abilities, knowledge, and what um, makes you different from other people. That's something that we want to support you with. The ambassadors in this program will be supported building their personal brand for the rest of the community, and we're making them visible and identifiable because they differ from the rest in some aspects. And finally, one of the things that we also have as goals is to establish a sustainable link between the ambassadors and LACNIC. We'll see that the program is one year old. Uh, it, it takes one year. so. The idea is that those have, that have already participated in this program may continue to participate in other areas of LACNIC with new opportunities to be part of our organization. So this is more or less the summary of what we seek in with this program. However, I want to, since we are together, I want to um, quote uh, Oscar Robles, the CEO of LACNIC. Well, not, not quote him. We want to hear him tell us what his view is of this program. So after I'm done, we're going to listen to Oscar Robles. Oh, it's a video. Thank you, teacher. Thank you for this initiative. I'm very happy to be addressing you to tell you what we are launching. Basically, we need your help. We need your help on issues that we have historically worked with for, to uh, fulfill our mission. If there's something that I uh, appreciate uh, of LACNIC is the wealth uh, of, uh, uh, of this work, having a cooperation uh, with the different uh, entities for the benefit of our community and our networks. So now what we are looking for is people interested in supporting us in our mission. So we are putting this program together for them. And we are interested in some topics. To the extent that you can support us in these topics, we are going to pay back with some benefits. You'll be told about it. In the uh, teacher will tell you the details in the presentation. But basically, what we're looking for is we want you to implement or to deploy some infrastructure elements that uh, we are going to give you the details about. DNS, any cast, uh, DNS reversal, some uh, measurement uh, uh, platforms, BGP collectors. 
RPK I validators in IXPs or promotion of research activities if you are not necessarily the operators of some center, of some um, computing center, or some NOC, for instance, where necessarily you need to be there. Um, and But there are also initiatives or some aspects um in which we can you can support us to support this initiative so now i'll give the floor to chicho he'll give you more details we're going to be very happy to work with many of you in these initiatives paying your effort back and the most important thing is that we don't want you to consider this is not going to be the beginning and the end uh, of a specific uh, effort the idea is to identify people that are ready and willing to support uh, LACNIC's mission and to work with you in collaboration as uh, with time, uh, with different initiatives and efforts. And this would be nothing but the gate in to start working with you so that you can make yourselves known through our events, our committees, what we have with our community. So thank you for your attention. I hope that this, that we'll have Thank many you. requests to participate in this initiative. So my greetings. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Oscar, for your words. Precisely what uh, Oscar just said. Well, I'm Chicho, let me tell you. I'm Guillermo, I'm, I'm AKA Chicho. So, what Oscar told you is that this idea of uh, attracting new people and helping you position yourselves in, in your community. This is something that uh, we uh, were discussing. Now, more concretely, to tell you what we expect what from you, what are the activities in which we want the community to do help us? Why do we want this support? Why is it that LACNIC deploys infrastructure? On the one hand, our uh, goals are to reduce the criticality of resources that are key for the operation of the internet. For instance, the DNS uh, root uh, zones or any cast copies of important uh, areas like the reverse zones. Uh, Vlaknik and other areas that are in zones that are important for the operation of the internet. So if everything is centralized in a few servers, that becomes much more critical. If we uh, put these anycast copies and uh, the DNS uh, routes and we deploy them in different uh, parts, in different countries, in different zones, so that it's no longer so critical. If the servers are attacked where the denial of service or if they stop operating, then others will uh, take over. So that resource was critical, but it's now no longer so critical. The other one is to improve the network stability and security. We want to have a secure network when we connect to a site. We don't want to have in any interference with what we do. We don't want anyone to look at what we do or to change the data that we have. And the network has to be stable. The network has to work as it has been working and also evolve and grow and improve. So with that aim, we need to deploy several technologies like RPKI, like IPv6, because you will see that there are many problems associated with continuing to use IPv4. Many of you have probably experienced the problems of IPv4 at present when you no longer have resources and need to get addresses from other sites. And then you have all the issues involving geolocation or also blocks that were used by other organizations and might be included in blacklist. So IPv6 is essential so that we can have a secure and stable network. And then DNSSEC, as well as other technologies, those are other examples of why we deploy infrastructure. One of the other things we're interested in in the R&D 
area, but also in general in the community, is to have a better knowledge on how the internet performs in our region. That is why we have route collectors, BGP collectors, we conduct active measurements, research, and we also deploy measurement platforms. But this is because we want to know how the internet performs and how we can communicate this to the operators for the purpose of decision making. For example, some of the measurements we conducted in as regards latency in some of the countries showed as a result that in that country, then the operators got together to see what problems they had, so they had to deploy more probes so that this would become more relevant. And this also led to making adjustments. We also conducted measurements on the root servers so that you can then, in each country, see which other copies that they should have. And then, of course, we want to help the network operators, not the ISP operators, but also the universities and the governments, namely all those who operate networks. These are networks that have autonomous systems that have their prefixes and also connect to the internet. So we want to strengthen capacities, promoting the adoption of standards and best practices. We therefore would like to help the network operators to adopt technologies such as these. Now, specifically in the ambassadors program, what we are promoting is the following. Firstly, the deployment of DNS Anycast root servers of LACNIC or the DNS root. There are some zones that are very important for the internet environment. So we work in the deployment of these servers. What do we need from you? Not to configure the DNS zone root zone, uh, but what we need from the ambassadors is to articulate with your local communities actions so you can have the possibility of installing by LACNIC or by some DNS operator for root servers, the possibility of, for example, having a virtual machine or a server where we can then install this. Now, obviously, this does not mean that you're going to install a DNS server in your offices. The idea is to install this in relatively large networks so that a larger number of users are benefited. For example, uh, IXPs, where there are many autonomous systems connected or a major network operator where you have many end users connected. So those uh, situations where this is meaningful. If it is a small network, this will only have benefit a smaller number of users. So I go back to what I was saying. What we need from you is not to do this, not to configure or set this up. We need you to open up the doors so that we can put that, place it there. And the same happens with the measurement platforms in an ASN group. In many of the research projects we have, have, we need to have active measurements. And the coverage in the region is quite limited. For example, the RIPE Atlas one, which is the one we use most. So at least we'd like to have a large number of probes in each of the autonomous systems, the main autonomous systems in a country or a region, or to place probes where we didn't have these previously. So this would be very useful for us. So what you have to do you don't have to place the probes. What we need you to do is to convene the operators to organize meetings where we can then present the topic, we can organize a webinar, and then we can organize a deployathon. For example, this is what Elisa does. Elisa Peirano works with me and is involved in this topic. So you can count on our support and even you can count on the support of RIPE to organize these activities. So what we need from you once again is to open up the doors to those organizations and the community. Another point is the deployment of BGP collectors in traffic exchange points. These have to be networks that have a lot of routes. 
And particularly the IXPs, where there are traffic exchange points, we need to connect with that PGP collector. This is because the information is not elsewhere. We have many global collectors, but we don't know what is happening in the IXP. So that information is very useful to carry out the type of research I was describing. And at the same time, we're also developing tools for the operators so that they can see how their networks are being published, which are things such as a prepending level of the number of prefixes. So with that aim, we need, once again, that you can help us to see how we can reach these BGP collectors. So maintenance and all the rest is done by LACNIC at the R&D area. But what we need then is to count on the support of the rest of the local community. And the same happens with the deployment of critical technologies like IPv6, RPKI validation, creation of ROAS by the operators, and the adoption of DNS and DNSSEC. So all this is in, of interest for us. It is not the same, for example, if you would like to organize an event on ROA signature in a country that already has a high deployment. This is the same happens with IPv6. If you are in a country that has a 90% deployment, for example, well, that would not be so interesting. But you are, in, if you're in a region or in a country that hasn't yet deployed IPv6, then in those cases, we can help you with that deployment. So these technologies, if you manage to organize events or if you manage to reach an agreement with the operators, we can then have a session on ROA signature or RPKI validation, etc. And local technical capacity building would consist in organizing workshops, tutorials, meetings, and other activities. We can then disseminate our strategic messages those of LACNIC. So we're interested in this, and this is part of this program. Therefore, if you manage to convene several organizations and organize a technical workshop, we can then organize tutorials or capacity building activities and help you out with things such as that, as those. And finally, to promote research activities in the region, we want everyone to know what the activities are that we organize, and we want to encourage you to improve that type of research. So part of this program includes all these different activities. I would like to you to help us out to carry these out. So what are the benefits for the R&D ambassadors? The program, well, this is the first edition of the program. This year, we're going to select three professionals, three individuals interested in this activity. The benefits included are a space in the annual event of LACNIC in 2025. I think the, there was a momentarily uh, interruption. Chicho, can you repeat what you were saying? Because there was an interruption. So I was saying that we're going to select three individuals. This is the first edition of this program. And then the benefits include a space in the event of LACNIC 2025. You will be able to share with us all the activities you organized. We're going to take care of the expenses of the travel and per diem to attend the event. We're going 
the development of a personal brand for the ambassadors. This would be highlighting those points in which they are different from other professionals and the best areas of performance so that they can position themselves in their communities and also regionally. Then visibility of the work that was carried out as an ambassador through the DACNIC's institutional channels. This is also important because when we are considering new collaborators that are not so well known in the region, well, we would like to have new people joining in. That is why we would like you to participate in our blog, in our interviews, and so on. One of the further benefits is that you will have up to 2,000 US dollars to carry out some of the tasks in that one-year period. So this could be used, for example, to hire software development or measurements or anything that you'd like to develop. And maybe the ambassador isn't able to do so, but maybe the ambassador knows someone who might do carry this out. Another option would be to organize an event and pay the venue or coffee breaks or when we organize workshops. There are up to 2,000 US dollars, a fund of 2,000 US dollars. And when you include your working plan, this has to include the budget and the request for the required amount. Also provide first to do of the advanced courses of LACNIC's campus. And the R&D area of LACNIC will be supporting you. This is very important so that you know you won't be on your own. There are many things that are quite technical. You needn't be totally involved technically. That is why we are there to support your work. We'll be providing training on whatever you need. And we will be in charge of configuration, setting up, etc. Now, specifically, how to apply and the more formal aspects. What are the commitments you undertake when you apply to this program? This is a one-year program. The candidates have to participate in the general meetings and in the trainings training activities organized by LACNIC. You have to participate in at least three follow-up meetings with the R&D area. You have to submit intermediate results in the follow-up meetings. This would be in September, December, and March, approximately, to see your progress and results. And finally, to present the final results of your work in writing in a publishable format prior to the 2025 event. So this will be in the month of April next year. How can you apply? Well, you have to send a proposal with a one-year working plan from June 2024 to June 2025. Formally, the working year starts in June. And there you have to detail the activities that you um, plan to organize while the program is uh, on. Send uh, your uh, PDF form um, in, uh, amb to ambassadorsatlantic.net. Uh, later on, I'm going to show you what an, a stamp, an example of the, the format. Now, the program is uh, targets individuals, people, not entities. And this is important because we are not targeting uh, organizations. It's individuals, rather. The applicants must be in, uh, um, must be working, uh, develop their activities in the territories that uh, are part of the coverage area of LACNIC. I want to show you now, I'm going to leave it for later, but I want to show you 
the format, how you have to apply. This is a timetable. This is more formal. You can see that on the website. But the important thing here is to consider that applications will be received until April 15. Then there's a period from April 15 to May 15 where we assess uh, the uh, applicants and then we'll announce who has been selected. Uh, and uh, the plan is to announce that in on May 17th, the working year would be from June the 1st, 2024 to 2020, June the 1st, 2025. And that includes the attendance to the event. The um, um, choice of uh, the applicants will be done based on the plans presented, how many activities were proposed, uh, the history of the candidates, we lost his voice. We had a, a Guillermo is having connection problems. We are waiting for him to log in again. Our apologies, these things happen when we have a live webinar. Okay, there, there he, let's resume a connection with a teacher, please bear with us. Hello, yes, my connection failed. Yes, so please uh, let's uh, share your screen again. Bear with me a second. Por donde quedamos, Sandra? Where did you uh, stop less hearing me? Did you miss a lot? Well, when you put this, uh, when, you, when you showed this slide, selection criteria. So the selection criteria is we are going to evaluate the number of activities that you're proposing, but also we are going to see whether what you propose to do is to install a root server somewhere where you already have a lot. It's not so interesting, but if you want to, to put one in a country that uh, doesn't have any, or that doesn't have a ladder or something, that's interesting. Or for instance, uh, implementing uh, RPKI or IPv6 in countries or regions that uh, lack it, um, well, that's that's we, something we're interested in. The activities, as I said, it's uh, one year. So you'll see how much you can do. That's another criterion. It's the feasibility of develop uh, the uh, action plan in this year, uh, this year. So the, and then the resources, the history of uh, the applicants, the resources they have, the, uh, the their capacity to articulate with the local community. So put that in your resume, but also tell us how you're going to do things. For instance, if you say, I'm going to implement RPKI with all the, the operators in my country. Well, but how are you going to summon them? Do you have any existing links? How can you organize a workshop or whatever to, to call all of the operators? They could tell you, well, no, I'm a, I'm especially working with the NOC and uh, IXP and well, we need you to tell us. And uh, that has to do with uh, the articulation capacity. The selection will be done by R&D. 
and uh, three ambassadors are going to be selected this for this period. What do we expect from the ambassadors? We want them to develop a working plan where LACNIC and LACNIC R&D are going to uh, accompany you. Please articulate your communities uh, to, so that you can uh, have the resources and uh, conduct your activities. LACNIC will support you with your installations, implementations, uh, setups, uh, uh, trainings. You don't need to configure anything. Please do not uh, panic because there, there may be some uh, issues that may sound technical, but we can set up the Anycast service or whatever. Or if you need training, you can ask us and we can help you both putting together the agenda and also presenting the topics. You may hire support for some tasks, for instance, uh, data processing, measurements, etc. And something that we would expect uh, from the beginning is that they may be related to LACNIC after the completing the program. So the, basically, this is everything I would have uh, to tell you. Now, before I finish, I wanted to tell you what the format is going to be like. Here, I, I think it's been confirmed that you see the website. Yes, Tito, we can see your screen. Good. This is the website. You can see it. It's R and D uh, ambassadors, the call, and then everything I just uh, described. You can read it. And here at the end, it says, well, how to apply. It's the same I showed you earlier. But here you have a template. Here it says contact, how to uh, communicate with us. The, and the data for, um, so here it says, send uh, a document uh, in a PDF format with a working plan, plan and uh, describe how you plan to do your work and what support you can receive. And he, this is the form. What you have to do is, in addition to putting your data, you need to um, include your activity plan, each activity that is described by what is the uh, objective. And so that is something that is essential um, for the uh, um, a program and your capacity to coordinate with uh, the rest. This is a way we can measure that uh, the plan is feasible. Then the timetable and the budget that you are requesting, LACNIC, remember it's $2,000 um, or less per ambassador. So here you can put activity, this one here, each activity of this can be replicated. Six, seven activities throughout the year. Our PKI, um, with the operators in the region. Well, for that activity, I need to buy some coffee and something for breakfast. So you put that and, and an estimated amount, another, another activity, measurements. For instance, it could be we install, installing a root server and uh, measurement probes, and we want to measure how that changed before and after. Well, that could be a research activity demanding a budget, for instance, to, to hire somebody for the measurements, if you are unable to, to do that yourselves. So this is the format in the website. So replicate this uh, activity plan as many times as necessary per activity, and then include your schedule and the budget you are requesting. OK, that would be all, as I told you. We hope you'll support us with this, and you can ask uh, uh, your questions to this address, Embajadores, and the deadline is April 15. Now, I don't know whether we have any questions or comments. Yes, indeed, we have questions. And I also wanted to add that in the chat, I put 
I put uh, a link uh, to the information that you mentioned. And yes, we have questions. Uh, would you like to start reading them? Yes, let me read them. I, I, I see three, right? Yes. In the first one, it says, Andres Alberto Cortés Fuentes says, how can we know the level of uh, uh, implementation of the infrastructures proposed in our country? I'm Andres Cortés from Costa Rica. Well, there, precisely these days, we were expecting a report per country. Elisa Peirano is working there. I think that she is connected, but she's not a panelist, so she she won't uh, be able to speak. But it's a page. In the report per país. In todo caso, lo que vamos a hacer es si si me mandas un mail, yo te te más paso el link porque ahora. No sé si lo voy a encontrar, pero, pero este, de todas maneras, en la página de la clínica hay, hay distintas mediciones sobre estas tecnologías. Lo que hemos hecho ahora es, es unificarlas en una. Donde está desde el despliegue IPv6, eh, los temas de BGP, eh, las ondas y demás. Entonces, este... The, the, um, the probes, etc. So, you can find all that there. So, Elisa... Elisa sent it to me. Yes, I'm going to show it. It, ha it hasn't been announced yet, but I'm going to post it. I don't know whether... Well, that's a scoop. It hasn't been launched yet formally. Well, I'm going to share it again because we only shared it among the panelists. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. Well, there you have the scoop. That's a report. You have uh, uh, here all the conditions. The only thing missing is RPKI, but you can find that in uh, our website. Any doubt, you can call me, Guillermo, uh, at lacnic.net. It was uh, shown in the first slide. So when it, um, you're going to find it easily. Otra pregunta. Gerardo Huerta. I Hola. have another question. Gerardo Huerta. Hello, everyone. My question is, in the activities that you, we should be carrying out, can we count on the 2,000 US dollars for developing the activities? Yes, the total amount of US dollars is per ambassador and per year. So, if you organize five activities, then you're going to need the $2,000 for the, those five activities, but you can use 2000 just for one activity and you don't have any money left for the other activities, or you can use it for one or two activities, or you can divide it into five. But the important thing is that you justify what you are going to spend the money on. For example, if you're going to organize a workshop, with operators or a training activity, then you need to rent a venue or you might get the someone lend you the meeting room, but you might need to have a way of offering a coffee break so that money could be used for that purpose. He's asking, can you propose two working areas where one of these areas is part of one of Black Knox working group? I don't quite understand why two working areas. It's not a problem if they are one of Black Knox working groups. Many of those who collaborate with us are members of our working group, and in fact, myself, I'm part of the working group on routing and training, so that wouldn't be an issue. Nevertheless, if you wish to check this out more specifically, please please feel free to do so. Luis Iturbide, 
I am uh, from a big ISP in Mexico, and I'm starting with the ROs and contributing with the RPKIs of the organization where I work. As such, the activities, will the activities have to be linked to my work in the company where I work? Well, in your case, as an ambassador, you can state that you are deploying this in an ISP, but if it's only in that ISP, which is a large ISP, then if it's a large ISP, it might be meaningful and might be interesting. But what we'd have to see is what else would that involve, because there might be other proposals that are more encompassing, but that's not bad. And you could state that as one of the activities within your working plan. And the same if is whether in that ISPs you're going to deploy probes. And then it would be better if you could aim at a larger community. Maybe you could organize a meeting with other ISPs from the region, and we can explain why it would be interesting to deploy our PKI in that ISP. So joint deployment of probes in a given region, for example. But yes, it could be linked to that. Jose Augusto, after installing a K route, what would be the next step to promote the use of this DNS in the zone, or would this occur automatically? I don't know where you installed a K route, but this is used automatically. Now, the concept is that those root servers desplegados por por distintas zonas es que el DNS deployed in different zones because the DNS usa todos uses the root servers and uses all and it rotates so each implementation has its own way of rotating between the different servers so, if you have a K root, then the queries go directly in that direction, but that occurs automatically. Another question from Andres Alberto Cortes Fuentes, which is the following. Uh, Project for transition from IP4 to IPv6 and the implementation of autonomous system compliant with the manners best practices by a local government, a municipality, or a town hall, which is currently in execution. Would it be valid to present this officially with a program and then in 2025 present this as a success story or success case? Well, yes, of course. Yes, of course. Uh, regarding the manners, uh, best practices, yes, this could be included, quite obviously. All the things you do in your work is part of all this. But we would like, for example, is if you could deploy this, or rather coordinate your work with other organizations in the region so that you do similar things and not that it is just one single autonomous system, but rather if you could reach more autonomous systems. So that is where your capacity comes in of articulating take things with other organizations in the region. A very key example of the training workshops. You work for ESP, for example, in a university network or in a government agency and you have the capacity to talk with other operators from other autonomous systems and to agree, for example, and say, well, let's organize a workshop to provide training on RPKI, for example, and we're going to ask LACNIC to support us. So that is an example of an activity that is relevant for this plan. For example, because this includes more than one autonomous system, it includes, includes several autonomous systems. Another case would be a deployathon. What Elisa stated she needs 
to produce a report. So those are examples of activities. Another question, TC3002, IT cybersecurity, etc. How can we know how feasible it is to submit a working plan for Mexico? I'm unaware how far this has been implemented by LACNIC. Maybe in that case, please send me an email to see what you are considering, and then I can help you out to figure out what would be more interesting or what has not yet been implemented. So once again, many of the technologies we are referring to are technologies that you can find in LACNIC's website, or you can also write to me. But the deployment, for example, there's lots of information on the deployment of IPA6, on the root servers, and the status. Uh, Si no, si no lo encuentran, me, me escriben y consultan. Pero, pues, este... If you wish, you can write to me. One of the things that we always need is the deployment of measurement probes. So that is something we are always interested in. So any more questions? So, but ahora no, no, more questions. no, Chicho, we don't have any questions. You can also, could you also please include Elisa's email? Here we have Elisa's email address and Guillermo's email address. So I don't have much more to share with you. Let me thank you very much for joining us this afternoon in this session. How many people do we have? We had more than 40. Great, that's great to have so many people interested in this. And to tell the truth, I'd like to thank you and encourage you to participate. At least read the conditions on the web page, send us your questions. The video will be available online. We organized one on one that was more focused on infrastructure. That was a few days ago. And this is also available in the website. There we made a description of the infrastructures and what that was about. So as I was saying, if you have any questions, please write to us, Guillermo or Elisa, or to the ambassador's address in the web page. Thank you very much. And please a pensar. write to us. The email address is embajadores at lacnic.net. Maybe you don't submit a proposal this year, but you can apply next year. If you don't apply for this program this year, and please let us know what you'd like to work on. And this should be helpful as a way to joining LACNIC and to stand out in your regional communities and become better known in the region. So that would be all on my behalf. Thank you very much, everyone, and greetings.